Good morning everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, as you fly along with me, we'll burst an aviation myth like why parachutes aren't given to passengers on commercial jets. So buckle up, this is a full day in the life of a pilot on an ultra long haul flight. I woke up bright and early. First, I offered my morning prayers. This is my grounding moment before a long day. Then it's workout time. As pilots, fitness isn't just about looking good, it's about stamina. Ultra long haul flights test your endurance. So even 30 to 40 minutes of stretching, cardio or strength training really helps. After a quick shower, it was breakfast. I usually go for something light, it filling, protein, fruits and lots of hydration. Staying hydrated before a long flight is key because the cabin air is much drier than normal. Well, and before I leave home, I go through my set of flight documents. A lot of people think pilots just show up and fly. But there's a lot of preparation involved. Let me break it down. Operational flight plan. This is the Bible for the flight. It gives information about the route, fuel burn, alternates, timings, weather chart, global weather en route, jet streams, turbulence, storms, volcanic ash. No temps. Basically provides information about unusual situations, closed runways, restricted zones, etc. Fuel planning sheet details uplift today it's about 1 lakh 60 thousand liters crew rosters and rest plan clearly schedules for who flies and who rest aircraft technical log shows aircraft health recent fixes deferred items this ensures we fly safely and efficiently because with ultra long haul flights there's no margin for error Transport had arrived just on time. It's a 10 minutes ride to the airport. I use this time to mentally prepare like an athlete does before a big game. Most long haul pilots spend more time preparing than actually flying a during cruise. 90% of the workload is in the first and last 30 minutes. At the passenger terminal, while a 12 to 13 cabin crew have already checked in, it's our turn. But here's a question I get asked all the time. Why don't airlines provide parachutes for every passenger? Sounds like a cool idea, right? But let me explain. Airliners typically cruise at 35,000 feet, where the air is thin, oxygen masks are needed, and the outside air temperature is about minus 50 degrees Celsius. A parachute jump here would mean instant freezing and unconsciousness for most people, which means it's not exactly a Hollywood-style skydive. Now, here's another fact. Most emergencies happen during takeoff and landing. At those altitudes, a parachute doesn't even have enough time to deploy. At a cruise altitude, the airplane is typically moving at a speed of about 900 km per hour. Jumping out, you would be slammed against the fuselage or sucked into the engines. Alright, even if we had solved all that, imagine the logistics, storing 300 plus parachutes, training every passenger to use them, creating emergency exits big enough for safe jumps. It's just not possible. A single parachute can weigh anywhere between 10 to 15 kgs. That's like adding several tons to the aircraft. That's why engineers put the effort in making the aircraft itself safer. Multiple backups, highly trained crews and strict maintenance. So in reality, the safest parachute is the jet itself. Fun fact, flying is 30 times safer than driving. And now it's time for me to head to the cockpit. We reached the aircraft about 45 minutes before departure time. As boarding time and fueling happened, we set up the cockpit. Fuel today was about 1,60,000 liters, enough to fly halfway around the globe. We programmed the flight management computer, checked performance data, set our radios, navigation and other stuff as well. Everything is double checked. Due to high ground temperatures, we had to offload baggage. Hot air reduces lift, meaning less weight is allowed. To know more about why this happens, you can check out this video of mine. After smooth takeoff, the next 17 hours and 12 minutes are spent cruising across oceans and continents. We rotate wrist brakes, check systems, monitor weather. 
on ultra long hauls jets burn about 8 tons of fuel per hour still modern jets are 50% more efficient than those in the 1970s after landing we taxi park and complete post flight paperwork customs and immigration takes anywhere between 45 to 60 minutes our transport is ready the same transport that brought the incoming crew a 30 minutes drive to the hotel absolutely no traffic Finally, I check in, grab some food and head to my room. Another ultra long haul flight completed. No captain flies alone. Even with 20 years of experience, I still rely on my co-pilots, cabin crew and ATC. On long hauls, yes, we use autopilot. But autopilot doesn't mean the pilots are absent. We are monitoring, cross-checking, constantly ready to take over. 17 hours is long. We fight psychiatric rhythm, fatigue, endless ocean crossings but the reason we keep going is because of a purpose hundreds of passengers trust us with their lives today turbulence shook us multiple times did we panic no because turbulence was expected at certain levels jet streams weather fronts etc before a long flight we calculate fuel to the last kilogram we don't load extra without reason too heavy new waste energy after a long tiring flight, noise, turbulence and constant monitoring, there's a beautiful silence when the aircraft touches down and rolls out safely. That feeling makes it all worth it. 17 hours and 12 minutes, that was today's flight. Across continents, through time zones, with turbulence on and off. Now that I am checked into the hotel, changing out of my uniform, I realize Flying an aeroplane is a lot like flying through life. Both demand endurance, preparation and courage to face turbulence head on. Sometimes storm forces us to divert. A diversion isn't a failure. It's a strategy. It's still progress towards the destination. In life, if plan A doesn't work, divert. Take plan B. Plan C. What matters is reaching your destination not sticking stubbornly to one track. So today's flight wasn't just about distance, it was about resilience. Every long haul, every turbulence, every fatigue reminds me aviation is life and fast forward. Stay fueled with purpose. Trust your crew and above all, keep flying because the skies don't reward those who give up midair. They reward those who hold the course until they land with pride. Flying may look glamorous, but it's all about discipline, teamwork and preparation. That's what makes aviation magical. Thanks for flying with me. I'll see you all in another vlog. Until then, this is Captain Mac signing off. Bye-bye.